Okay, what you're about to hear is the introduction to an amazing time with two of my friends. But first, I'm gonna tell you something. It's gonna sound like an ad, but it's not. What if I told you there's something you can participate in, not take, but just participate in, that decreases your stress, increases immune cells and infection fighting antibodies, and your resistance to disease. It also triggers endorphins, the body's natural feel good chemicals, which also promote an overall sense of well being and can even temporarily relieve pain. That sounds like an ad for like some awesome new vitamin or like wellness drink or whatever, but it's not. You know what it is? It's laughter. And you know how we get laughter? Time with our friends. And on that note, I want to introduce you to two of my, I guess I can call you besties for the resties. You're stuck with me forever. <laughs> two of my great, great friends, Melanie Chitwood and Candace Salomon. Welcome, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. This is quite a new little situation for us. Usually we're sitting around a table eating food and playing cards and, you know, solving all of our problems together. But today we're actually going to invite others to join us in our conversations. And one of the biggest reasons that I wanted to do this conversation today is because the three of us together, we've been through a lot and we've processed a lot of hard stuff. Each of us have been through a divorce and had this life altering and quite honestly, very unexpected turn of events and it's changed a lot about our life. But one thing that hasn't changed is our friendship. It's only gotten deeper through this time. And I truly believe that God brought us together because he knew that we didn't just need friends who could sympathize with us, but we needed each other because we knew the depth of feeling and angst and stress that these kinds of life altering events like a divorce can bring. And so I'm so grateful for you. I wanna specifically focus on things that are good to say to a friend that are going through a hard time and things that maybe we should avoid saying to someone who's going through a hard time. So Mel, I'm gonna look at you mm. first. <laughs> well, I've certainly heard some of both. Definitely have heard some things that I wish people hadn't said to me. Um, but honestly, if if I hadn't been through what I've been through, I probably have said or would say some of the things too. So I'll start with one of the things that is hard to hear is you're going to get better soon or it's going to get better soon. Or when are you going to feel better or you should feel better by now. Or it's time to move on. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's Divorce has been the most um, painful thing I've ever been through. It was unexpected. I was married for 31 years. All of us were married a long time. And it's a journey of grief that um, is, is just unexpected. Um, you think you're over it and then something happens and you're right back in the middle of grief. So lots of triggers. Um, I love your counselor, Jim Cress's um, quote about grief. Yeah. Can you say that? Yeah. He, he says, um, I may not get the words exactly right, but he says, grief is like a river. You just got to get in it and let it take you where it's going to take you. Yeah. And, you know, we've processed a lot because I was about a year, year and a half ahead of you in, yeah. um, in my divorce. And I started going through this cycle and it doesn't exactly mirror the cycle, grief cycle that a lot of people talk about, but there seems to be four phases that yeah. you go through. And, um, and no you, matter what kind of grief, I think yeah, the listeners right. need to think about, doesn't have to be divorce. It could be losing someone. It could be um, just a different season of life, you mm -hmm. know, being an empty nester or. Yeah, it could be anything where you thought your life was going to go this way or you expected it to feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden life goes this way and a whole different set of emotions hits you really hard. Mm -hmm. And I think grief is at the foundation of what we experience when we experience loss of any kind. Yeah. Um, so I remember talking to you through this and the first phase for me, and I think you experienced these exact same phases. So the first phase to me was, was re relief. Mm -hmm. And that may sound strange, but the intensity of trying to save a relationship that 
in the end couldn't be saved, but the trauma and the drama and the chaos around that, at first I felt relief. Mm -hmm. And then after the relief, I felt, I started to feel this, pretty intense sadness mm -hmm. and I couldn't even figure out what the sadness was at first. Then I went through a season of really intense loneliness yep. and it felt like, honestly, it felt so unfair because I felt like I'd already been through enough. Now, why do I have to process all of these hard emotions, you know? And now I've circled all the way through those and now I'm at a place of healing and maybe relief again. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like relief that the intensity of the sadness and loneliness mm -hmm. um, is gone. And this time, instead of a relief, like I'm out of the chaos, it's more a relief of acceptance. Like and mm -hmm. maybe hope. And maybe hope, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. of where I'm at and I'm grateful for that. Mm -hmm. But what's been so interesting is because we're at different phases of the journey I'm able to say, oh, you felt the relief? Yeah, I went through that too. Oh, deep sadness? Yep, and right behind mm -hmm. that, I hate to tell you, it's gonna be loneliness. Mm -hmm. But then eventually there will be this different kind of relief of acceptance and hope. So that's excellent. I do think you've gotta let people go through the process. Absolutely. And, and it's not a linear process. Sometimes you'll toggle between these feelings that we just described. Mm -hmm. So Mel, if you, what what would something positive that be something positive that you could say if that's a hard thing to say like aren't you over this yet mm -hmm. then what would be something positive well one of my favorite things that you say um is how can i support you mm. it's my favorite thing that you say it's so much better than what can i do for you or how can i help you because a lot of times you you don't know the answer to that. You just want to feel better. Mm -hmm. But how can I support you is just that sense of I'm bearing this burden with you. Or I'll bear it for you mm -hmm. if you can't bear it right now. And we definitely have felt that for each other. I mean, we've called each other first thing in the morning where we just wake up with immense grief sitting on our chest. And we just are almost panicky can't make it go away and you know today i started the yes, day that way that today true, and we're Candace, far into did. this process yeah. and literally today i started and knew i could tell you guys right away this is happening i'm heavy i'm low again and mm -hmm. you guys yeah it was a big encouraged step me. back mm -hmm. yeah. and i think the other thing too that is special is that not only do we understand this journey because we're all on it together, but we're also able to process together. Mm -hmm. And our bank is already so full of trust with one another. And we don't have to go backwards and explain mm -hmm. why we're feeling this way. Right. We can just state what we're feeling and we all truly get it. And so <clears throat> it's from that place of truly getting it that if you're open to a thought or you want advice, we can give it and you can trust that on a whole different level because you know we've experienced the depth of pain. Sometimes I think when people give us advice, it's it can be easy to say, yeah, easy for you to say, but you don't really know what yeah, this feels you're like. you're married. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or you haven't experienced this kind of loss. And so mm -hmm. if they're trying to give advice, but they've never experienced this, sometimes that can be really hard to receive. Yeah. But a bigger factor of that is have they built the trust bank up mm -hmm. to where right. you trust them enough that this advice is going to be something that is really applicable to the depth mm -hmm. of emotion you're feeling. Right. Mm -hmm. And today that was certainly the case, Candace. You know, mm -hmm. you were you had two people that you could reach out to. I think Mel today was the comforter and I was the bossy one. I know. <laughs> and that's great. And y'all know me. And like you said, we have the foundation and you know the history. I didn't have to explain why I was feeling mm -hmm. or even really what I was feeling. I just mm -hmm. kind of had to say this happened and y'all knew the things mm -hmm. that you needed to do and mm -hmm. say mm -hmm. absolutely that moment. And you may be sitting here thinking, well, that must be nice. Like I would love to have these two friends. I want to, want you to know that 
Mel and Candace weren't in my life at the very beginning of this journey, even though I've known Mel for probably 30 years. When our kids went to different schools, we lost touch. And so, and then when we rekindled our relationship, you were still very much married. And so the Lord really put us together in such a unexpected way. But here's what I want to say. If you don't have friends that you feel like you can really communicate with and process with from the depth of similar understanding, then we want to be those friends for you today. And we pray that today's episode will really comfort something in your heart Mm -hmm. and, um, and give you some things to think about when you're looking for friends, when you're praying for friendships, mm-hmm. but also how you can be a terrific friend. And if you're a terrific friend who says the things that are helpful and not hurtful, then you'll attract those kinds of friends. So, so Candace, what is something that you would say, a don't say and then a do say? Well, my do and don't are kind of related to each other. And I want to be really careful because the foundation of what we, the three of us have and and other close friends is that I know without a doubt, both of you, the foundation is Jesus Mm -hmm. for you. That is the filter that you are thinking about me through. You're thinking about anything I share with Mm -hmm. you. And so I know that. And, I, and you don't have to give me a Bible verse for me to know that. I know that in your character. And so I would say, you know, knowing the friends you're talking to, are you talking to friends that, that have a, a foundation of that? So the, the don't is the thing well, I- I'm going to say something that you said to me that made me giggle about the Bible verses. Yes, Bible verses can give you strength and lift you out of the pit. But you said to me, don't say the joy of the Lord is my strength. Because- right. You know that, but sometimes it just sounds like a platitude. Mm -hmm. It does. And And so, need before somebody needs to be taught something, they want to feel understood. mm -hmm. Right. You want to feel heard and like that they are joining me in my pain, not just trying to slap the first Band-Aid that comes to their mind on it. And Mm -hmm. so, Christianese, to to just not have knee-jerk, Bible verses, and again, not that there's not a time and place, and I value that, and Mel and I were talking, I think it was yesterday, and we're, we're constantly praying for each other, and she had been praying for me, and she was saying, you know, I've been praying for you in this particular situation for weeks, and there's this one verse I've been praying. Well, she had been praying it for weeks before she ever shared it with me, but then we were in a conversation, and it was, she knew then was the right time, mm-hmm. and it was the perfect time, and mm-hmm. then I dove into that section of scripture and I read everything around it and lots of translations of that. It was the perfect time. But had she shared it just in the moment of just me saying, here's what I'm struggling with, it it probably would have felt like... Yeah, and it would like short circuit your ability to process the depth of emotions that you were feeling. And sometimes the best thing to do is just get it out. Mm-hmm. And that's biblical. I mean, if you look at the Psalms, you know, the lament and just like pouring out our heart to the Mm -hmm. Lord and to a friend, sometimes just getting it out is helpful. But if somebody too quickly quotes a Bible verse or even just a feel-good statement or whatever, it can short-circuit what you really needed in that conversation. Right. And that was to be able to get the hard stuff out. Right. And so I would say that let them know you're hearing them and that you're understanding that they're having a hard time. And if a Bible verse does come to mind right then, make a note of it in your own mind and do like Mel did and and pray that verse for them and make that truth, but don't feel like you have to immediately share the Bible verse in order to just sort of justify that you're coming at it from that standpoint. I think it's such a great comfort to know that both of you are praying for me. Mm -hmm. And I can honestly say, I feel like you pray more words over me than you speak to me. Mm -hmm. And that is such a unique bond to know that someone has your best interests at heart. And maybe you're in a season where you feel like, I don't even have the words to pray, or I've run out of the words to pray, or I just feel like I'm saying the same things over and over for, you know, to the Lord, but it's so comforting to me when I know, okay, when my faith starts to get shaky, mm-hmm. I can go and stand on the 
faith of these two friends who I know are praying for me. And so I think that's beautiful. But I love your advice of wait for the timing to give them that Bible verse. And if they've been praying through that verse for you, that's just quite a gift. It is, it is. But but feeling heard often in that moment is the bigger gift to their heart in the moment. Okay, so that's your don't. So what's your do? Well, my do is to kind of the same, it's that reverse. It's to yeah. hold back and just be that ear and listen and affirm that mm-hmm. you're hearing them, affirm that you're with them, that even if you don't understand what they're going through, that you're just there and that they can feel whatever they're feeling, that they can have the freedom to feel that mm-hmm. and not have to have it Sensor. neat and tidy. Yeah. Yes, that they yeah. don't have to hold it back. They, If they're feeling sad, if they're feeling mad, if they're whatever the feeling is, Mm -hmm. that they are safe to express it and you're just there to validate that and validate them and affirm them, but you're not necessarily trying to fix it Mm. for them and particularly fix it with just a sticking a sticky note Bible verse (laughs) on top of it. That's really good. Um, Okay, I'll go next. I sometimes, I just really need to not process the hard stuff. And I just need to have fun and I need to laugh. And I need friends who will participate in healthy coping mechanisms for me, (laughs) with me. You know what I mean? Healthy coping mechanisms. Yeah, because there's unhealthy ones for sure. You know, you're not going to find us going out and like acting a fool. You know what I mean? But you'll be inside. We'll be inside. (laughs) And it'll be more just being silly a fool. Yes, Yes, yes. But, it was so good for me to remember how to laugh again. And that's why I started off this whole episode. Like laughter, like the Bible says, is such good medicine. Laughter does so much for us. And we talked about all the properties that it helps our immune system and you know all of that. But it also releases those endorphins and it can make a sense of well-being come into your life for just a little bit. Mm-hmm. And maybe you haven't had that in a long time. And I I remember one time, Candace, that um, you said something to me that someone spoke over you, and it was really, really harsh, and you were playing that over and over and over yeah. in your mind. So what was that statement? Yeah, I had been told that when I walk into the room that I just suck the fun or the joy out of the room or out of a situation. And what I was able to do is point to Candace, look at all the times that not only did you not suck the fun out of the room, but you often are the very one that brings it. Mm-hmm. Like you, you lead the charge with silly. And we love that about you. I have videos. Wait, I was about to say, we have <laughs> many videos. Of Candace dancing. I have videos of you dancing on the streets of New York. Just- now this sounds like we're acting a fool, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we were in one of those machines where the camera circles around you and it does like a 360 video of a, of dancing. You were definitely participating in the dancing more than Mel and I were. It was fantastic. I do it love was to your dance. moment. It I was do your love moment. To dance. It was and your then shiny moment. I remember we decided uh, the three of us on New Year's Day went and um, went to Philadelphia. And we ran the rocky steps. I think Mel was the filmer. Did Mel did not go to the top. I did not. I just filmed. <laughs> you were the yeah. You were the videographer that day. But Candace and I ran those steps, and it wasn't about who can run them faster. It wasn't even about can we run them, you know, fast or or get to the top, you know, yeah. with like this stellar athletic demonstration. But you did. We did, but um, it was not a stellar athletic demonstration at all. But that moment of victory was such a tangible, beautiful moment for me because I felt like in conquering that thing of running the Rocky Stairs together, when, when we did it together, it's like it was a moment of victory. And sometimes when you're going through a hard time, it feels like, the victory or the redemption is a long ways away. Yeah. So I think it's good to have little mm-hmm. moments of victory that um, that happen not when you're perfectly healed, but when you're in the process. Yeah. Right. And I, I think people who lose someone through death, um, you know, maybe suddenly, maybe in a long illness, I think they almost sometimes feel guilty 
for being happy. Yeah, I was going to say that. It can be counterintuitive. But it's okay. You know, you have permission to be happy. Um, In the middle of hard things. Yeah, in the middle of your grief. Yeah, sorrow and joy oftentimes have to coexist in the human heart. And it's good to have friends that remember that joy is is possible. Yeah. But sometimes you have to bring the joy. And yeah. you really do. Candace, okay, wait, I'm going to tell okay. on you. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa's life. Well, there's two things. <clears throat> two things always. Music. Yes. yes. <laughs> Usually some kind of dance music. Well, because you know the greatest movies have awesome soundtracks. Yes. So why not add a little soundtrack? There is always, always a soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> so that's been very therapeutic. And there's a certain game that I think you should get a sponsorship for. I know. We <laughs> that really would be good. Think through that. I know. <laughs> so there is no sponsorship <laughs> happening today. <laughs> so there's a game called Monopoly Deal that Lisa tried to talk me into playing for months. And I'm like, I am not playing that game. I hate Monopoly. I know, because when people hear Monopoly, they think I'm going to be sitting for hours. at a hours. board game for hours and hours and hours I don't watching paint kind of dry. But spam. this is the Monopoly deal card game. And you can play a whole, uh, what do you call it? A whole round, round. In, um, in like 20 minutes. Yeah, it's and so it's fast. fast. It's fast. And it's so we so literally fun. play it everywhere. Yes, we do. We played right before this podcast. <laughs> yeah, we did, actually. They said that the crew needed a little bit more time, and we're like, no Get problem. And we have cards. two of us had the Monopoly deal cards in their purse ready to go, and we did not talk about doing Monopoly deal yeah, today. We've played so, on planes. We have. In pools. In pools. This restaurants. Is true. Any restaurant. That's right. And I think what's so unique about that is it allows us a healthy way to cope with the hard stuff without even having to talk about the hard stuff. Yeah. And um and we don't have uh we don't we don't have pity on each other when we're playing this no. game at all. <laughs> we are very competitive. We are very competitive. Some of us are really competitive. <laughs> and what what that does if you find something that you enjoy and and often it's a process. I know for me you're having to rediscover ways to have fun, ways mm. to create your own joy. If if you've been Mm -hmm. in a long season of something hard Mm -hmm. or you've just gone through something, you may have to rediscover that. And then you do. And we can play cards and be laughing one minute and almost crying the next. We can toggle between very serious and very silly in the same hand of cards. And so if you've got, if you find something you can do Mm -hmm. with friends that you can share some joy in, you'll actually be able to do both. And, you know, even I'm thinking Mm of, you know, if you're hiking or walking, you're doing this thing, but you can also process. And we definitely do that. We we don't just play or just process. We play and process. We do it all together. That's true. Some of and us again, do that better than others. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa being the sum. <laughs> okay, Mel is just doing this because I did just win, but then you won one too because we actually played two games I today. I did not. We have a. I did. Yeah. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Candace did. Sorry, Mel. I was trying to build you up. It's not my day. Not your day. <laughs> but even something like that, like playing cards and having a moment of victory or whatever, or Life laughing, victories. and it's just, it gives you a sense of joy or almost just, like I said, victory in the middle. Normalcy. Relief, you know, yes. sometimes when you're going through a hard time, your heart is so heavy and you ache so intensely. Honestly, I've never known this intense ache before. I mean, like literally physically hurt. Oh, yes. And you can't stay in that place forever. It's yeah. just too much. And so these are little respites. Repri- yeah. Reprieves. Yeah, which is awesome. Okay, so that's my do, is like, okay, we got to introduce some fun. Maybe for you, if you've been through a really long, hard season, it's been a really long time since you've had fun, had fun, and you can feel like you've almost lost yourself. Like, I used to be such a fun person. If you catch yourself saying that, then that's an invitation to do something. Do something fun. and Try some things. And try some things. It doesn't have to be big. That's right. No. No. That's right. I mean, we play cards. That's definitely not big. And it's <laughs> not expensive true. and it doesn't require leaving home. Like just try things. Yeah. 
and it doesn't help us stay in shape or any of that. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> not. In fact, it's, it's having the opposite effect on some of us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's an episode for another day. Um, but here's one thing that I would say is my don't. And like Mel said before, I'm sure I've done this, but it's really hard on me when someone says to me, I've been thinking a lot about you and I just, I know this is just such a hard season and you're just going through so much. Now, here's the thing, that sentiment is kind and I know I've said that to other people before, but in that moment, the way it makes me feel is pitiful. Yes. And I don't like to feel pitiful because it takes me backwards rather than moving me forwards. A much better thing to say in that moment is something that they like about me because I'm already feeling such loss. When you lose a relationship, especially a relationship that came on the heels of a lot of rejection and betrayal and um, emotional abuse, if that's the case, you know, um, you start to really feel less and less and less good about yourself. Yes. And so it it would be so sweet, and it is so sweet when someone just steps in. You did it the other day, Mel. You said, um, Lisa, you really know a lot about a lot of things. <laughs> you do. And I was like, I do? And I don't even remember. Oh, we were talking about something. Finances. Yeah, okay. we were talking about finances, which is not, I really don't know a lot about finances, <laughs> but I knew about this one change in the inheritance taxes and all the stuff that um, I was like, hey, you need to look into this. And she just quickly stopped and she's like, Lisa, you know a lot about a lot. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think in that moment, instead of pity, like, I know you're going through such a hard time. Instead of that, it made me remember something that is good about myself. And right. it made me remember that that person that I feel like got somewhat lost in this process mm -hmm. of grief. And so that's what I would recommend for mm -hmm. sure. And that reminds me, I'd totally forgotten about this happening. I, I know I shared it. I know I shared it with Lisa. I may or may not have shared it with Mel, but in the earlier times of when I was going through the divorce, I ran into an old friend from college and hadn't seen her probably since a few years after college. And we decided to have lunch and we we did have lunch. And in that lunch, she started, when she saw my sadness, she was like, there's something missing from you. Where is it? She started reminding me of all of these things that she remembered about me, things she remembered about me from college, things she remembered when we were just out of college and working. She was telling me things that I'd forgotten that employers had said and accomplishments in my jobs. And she started calling these things back out of me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, that is who I was. And that's not how I was feeling anymore. And that's still who I am. And it's still who I was in that moment, mm -hmm. but that's not what was on the surface. And so it's exactly mm -hmm. what you said. It's like, you're already feeling low. And I didn't even know I needed that. And then mm -hmm. she started reminding me and calling these things out in me. And you are both good at that too. You both call out mm. the best and you name the things very specifically, it's not just like, you're do. a good person, <laughs> but you you think of, you notice things that we do and say them. Yeah. And, and that is really helpful. About yes. you, which is mm -hmm. awesome. Okay. Yes. Well, I want to end with this because you told us a story about a family member that had cancer and it really resonated with me. I've also had cancer, but the biggest label that I feel like I've carried, and this was my resistance for so long to accepting the death of my marriage, was I just didn't want to be a divorced woman. And that label has been so hard on my heart. And me so too. you told me about a family member that had cancer, and I want to end with that today because I just think it's such a good reminder. Yeah, she, when she was going through her cancer, she said one of the hardest things about it, now she had surgery and she was going through chemo and radiation, and all of those things, but she said one of the hardest things was that everywhere she went, she felt like she was cancer, like she was the big cancer label walking around and that everybody meant well and they would just ask her about cancer. Oh, how are you doing? I'm so sorry. I've been thinking about your family. And those, again, those are wonderful sentiments and I had never thought about that 
that that's all people are saying. And she said she just wanted to walk into a room and feel normal and have a normal conversation. And then as I was going through my divorce, it was the same thing. I suddenly felt like I was walking into every room or everywhere I was divorce. Like I was wearing a big placard that said divorce, divorce, divorce. And that everybody, you said it earlier, was looking at me like we're pitiful. Mm -hmm. Like they felt sorry for me. And you just want to feel normal. You want to feel like a whole person, not like something is missing. So whatever kind of loss it is, you don't want to feel like it made you less whole. Whether it was an illness, a divorce, an actual loss of death, you know, just a, a hard season, the end of a season, whatever mm -hmm. that is, you don't want to feel like that made you less whole or less of a, a normal person. Yeah. yeah, and that can apply even if there's someone struggling with anxiety, you know, they don't want to walk mm -hmm. into a room and everybody's like, oh, anxiety is here or oh, mm -hmm. cancer is here or oh, mm -hmm. financial problems is here or oh, divorce is now here, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I want to be able to walk into a room and have people say things like cute shoes, you know? Right. <laughs> or what have you been learning lately? Or, you know, what's something fun you're looking forward to? And it's that kind of stuff that brings a normalcy and almost an equilibrium back when you're in a season of turmoil. And I really, really like that example because I think it's such a good reminder. Well, Mel and Candace, is there anything last that you're burning to say? If not, that's okay. You can go, nope, I got it all out. But is there anything else you're like, I got to say this before we end today's episode? I am going to say one little thing. When you go through a really hard time like divorce, you can get bitter and you can get hard-hearted and yeah. you can get vengeful and... And feel justified. Yeah. yeah, and often justified. And there's a difference between feeling that just for a moment versus camping out on it. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that good friends do is help you not camp out in a place you know you don't want to be. You know you don't want to stay there. It might feel like it for that moment mm -hmm. that that's where you want to stay. But good friends know that's not who you are. That's not your character. That's not where you want to stay. That's so good. And though. I feel like we do that really well for each other. Yeah, because the last thing you need is for us to jump in the pit with you yeah. and to say, you know what? Totally, you are so justified. And like, yeah, you should do everything you can to get back at that person. Right. Or yeah. You should do everything you can to make this wrong right. Um, but instead of that, we will have that righteous anger with you. We'll, we'll say, that stinks, or yeah. that's awful, or that should have never been done to you. Mm -hmm. But then we're going to call you forth to a better place. And you guys do that same thing for me. You call me forth to a better place, and that's what good friends do. Well, this has been so fun. It has. Kinda, Thank you. I, I kind of feel like we need to do friend talk, like, again. That would be great. We would love that. <laughs> would you really? Or do you get super nervous? No, I would really <laughs> love that. I would love that. <laughs> well, this has been great. I hope what we've said is helpful. And um, and today, you know, if, if you need a friend that is all these certain qualities that we've talked about today, be that friend. And like I said before, when you are that friend, you will attract more friends like you. So thanks, guys. It's been really fun. It was. Thank you.